Well, it feels like a Monday, but it's a Tuesday. Just had the four day long weekend. Um, so typically Courtney would work on a Monday and she would do the, the largest post day, which is the Monday post um, for me. But um, with the way that it's fallen this week, it's in my hands. And uh, I'm actually looking forward to doing the post. I haven't done it in ages. Um, I'm gonna turn the camera on and take you through the post as well, just the, the way I go about it. Uh, I might even show you the actual shipping component, not just what is sold, which is what I typically normally film. Um, hopefully you get some value out of it. Hopefully this is a bit of a, a motivational video for you to go, you know what, I've thought about selling on eBay, but after watching that video that the Aussie Flipper put up, I'm actually gonna give it a go. That is what I would like to achieve for at least one of you that are watching out there to say that, yep, April, we're in April, new month, let's get after it. Shoot me a message on Instagram if you are the person that chooses to do that after this video. Uh, we've got 40 sales, 40 sales that I've got to go back and uh, look out and ship off. All of this is done out of a single car garage, guys. I am no different to any one of you. Um, Maybe you don't have a single car garage, maybe you're in a unit or something like that, and that, that obviously makes things a little bit even trickier, right? Um, you do need some form of storage capacity to house this inventory that we purchase from thrift stores, flea markets, garage sales, wherever we find our stuff. So you do need some form of storage. Um, but I have been very, very content with my little five by three single car garage. We house 1,600 items in there, and uh, I think we could comfortably house 2,000 items. I don't think we're at capacity by any means. I think we're probably maybe 80% at capacity, I would say, uh, at the moment. So we're comfortable. And I'm also listing up slightly less items as well because I'm trying to work on a higher average sale price. Um, and I'm not finding that out in thrift stores and flea markets as easily as the small stuff. Um, but with Australia Post increasing their price points as a perfect example, that really does squish your margins ever so ever so much. Um, but if you've got a, a larger average sale price, you've got room to move within your margins to be able to cover those increased you know, costs that are rising, not only at the uh, post office, but also in the thrift stores, if that's where you're choosing to purchase your goods from. Uh, those prices have been going up a lot over the last 12 months as well. So, higher average sale price, less items, less listings, more bang for buck. That's what I'm all about this year. Um, not sure what the average sale price was from over the weekend, but 40 sales is pretty strong. It's an average of about 10 a day, four day long weekend where we weren't doing the post. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you back home now and start to pick out each and one of these sales and uh, show you how I go about shipping them off as well. So. Hopefully, like I said, you can get a bit of motivation, inspiration, and this could be the video that gets you underway and gets you started with the whole selling on eBay process. All right, a successful mission to Bunnings. There's never any, any, there is never any guarantees at Bunnings that you're gonna find the right boxes that you need, the right size of boxes, but I think boxes that we've got here are going to do the job just nicely. Now, I don't know if you can see, but I've got a bunch of stuff here. That's all the listings that I've got for Courtney tomorrow, so I actually don't need to go ahead and list this up. Um, so I'm just going to leave that all on the floor. I do like to do a bit of a Monday morning vacuum, a bit of a clean up around here. I'm actually going to leave this garage door open today because I kind of like the nice airflow that comes through here as well. It's just the flies that you got to worry about. I've got to find some form of netting. I really want to try and get a netting put along the back there just so I can uh, sort of unzip it to get myself out and keep the flies out but let's um let's jump onto the old laptop here and start having a look at some of these sales all right first item up it's a good one too guys we have the Pokemon edition of the Nintendo 64 console this is an absolute beauty now it's got all of its cables, as you can see there. There was a slight crack on the front there, but it didn't stop this one selling in a record pace of time. Really, really quick. It's a limited edition Pikachu Pokemon uh, Nintendo 64. We got a $365 sale price for this one. 
Um, so this one wasn't too bad. Uh, look, it ended up making us a profit of $260. I say $260 because there was no cost of goods uh, with this one because it was a, a consignment deal that we did with Selwyn. I've got a bit of a spreadsheet that I'm running there with Selwyn and I'm breaking it all down. It meant that we're on $130 each because we're doing 50% of the profit. Uh, so 360 minus fees and post gave us 260, which gives us a 50% split, 130 each. So that's how that one breaks down, but that is an awesome sale that we're gonna be putting actually into one of the boxes that we picked up earlier. I'm gonna find one of those a little bit later once I've looked out all the sales. That's what I like to do first, is actually just go around, have a look at the orders on the laptop and just pick out each and every order that comes through. So first one, Nintendo 64, not a bad one. All right, our next sale is actually out here. So this is all DVDs along the front here. A lot of TV shows now, we're not so much doing movies anymore. And tub number 36 is this one here. We've actually had a DVD bundle of A Nightmare on Elm Street. There it is. So A Nightmare on Elm Street, number one to four. So there was a box set of number three. I had a copy of number four made them one listing. I listed it up for $19.50, I think, and we got a coupon activated as well. So I think it was like $18.50 worth of a sale price. I'm gonna put this into a small satchel as well, um, which brings it down to a $10 sale price. So you can see how what I was touching on before about trying to play with higher average sale price type items only. You know, after fees and posts, cost of goods, we're only making a couple of dollars out of this, and it's just not worth it. So nonetheless, it's still good to get it done, $19.50. A Nightmare on Elm Street, some horror movies, which is always a good genre if you aren't playing in the DVD category. All right, some more Pokemon cards up next. I've actually got this little allocation of top loaders right here um, of consignment uh, Pokemon cards that I'm doing with Selwyn. Um, so he gave me a bunch. There's some Squirtles. There's, I don't know how to pronounce that guy, but He's there as well. They were all really, really good condition. You could have arguably gone and got these graded, but for the process of just you know, trying to grade a $60 raw card, I don't think it's worth it. Um, so Squirtle's there for about 60 I believe. Um, this one sold though, Magby. Try and get it in a good light. There it is there, Magby. Uh, so that one sold on consignment with Selwyn, 50% split of the profits yet again. Um, it only sold for $16 though. Um, so I'll show you how to do that from a shipping standpoint a little bit later, but um, yeah, 16 bucks. I think it makes us about $3.50 when you uh, take fees post and do the 50% consignment split. So yeah, not a great win there, but we've got so much on consignment. We've just had a good win there with uh, Selwyn on consignment, so a second one isn't too bad. All right, I'm on the video game wall now, guys. All of this is our video game section. There isn't any other video games housed anywhere else. Um, and it's all neatly laid out as I've touched on over the last few weeks. But uh, we have had a number of sales, I think, in this, um, in this shelf. But the one that I need to grab right now is this one in the Xbox 360. It is Skate. Um, really good game, Skate. Sold this one so many times before. Um, it's complete with its manual. It's not a big, you know, Expensive game, this one only sold for $15, and we are now putting all DVD, single, and video games into tracked envelopes. We're back on the tracked envelope path, um, just to avoid any issues, and obviously on the fact that we're trying to do a higher average sale price will allow for obviously track postage to be viable. Um, so track postage is what we're doing, and this one will go into that. So about $5.30 to ship it off with that track post envelope, um, a $15 sale price. So, you know, again, you're into like a $9.50 sale and you're buying it for 2 or $3. So you're not making a ton of money again either. Probably only $5 profit, but still another sale done. They're just quick winners, guys. Like the video games, you know, $15. We've actually stepped that up to $20 now for that reason. Like $20 will hopefully net us around about a $10 profit. Um, and that's just so much nicer than a few bucks. So um, all of these here, if you consider $10 profit in every single one, there's some good money to be made there, but they're just really quick listings, really quick wins. You're getting them for a pretty cheap price pretty often, so it's still a category that I like to play in, but um, like the DVD box sets, they generally make a bit more money than these video games. Um, and you, are, you can obviously go ahead and bundle them up like we're doing with everything up the top here. 
um, and you get some pretty high average sale prices when you go ahead and do that. But um, yeah, $15, it's the cheapest game that we've got. I knew I had a few of these, a few video game sales. Uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is the next one. This one is actually a much better scenario. It's got its map, it's got its manual. The game is in great condition as well. This one's actually going overseas to Brazil. Uh, we got a $26 postage rate and it sold for $18. So that is a much better scenario for profit in our pocket. Uh, we also don't have to pay GST on anything that goes overseas. So overseas has multiple wins, um, but when you're doing the free postage model, which is what we do, um, that, that, that charge of postage at $26 doesn't cut into our $18 sale price. It obviously goes on top. Yet we've accounted for the, uh, the postage price when we're doing the sold comps um, to note that this is you know, a $12, $13 game um, plus the postage of $5.30. So $18 worth of the sale price on this is pretty decent. I mean, San Andreas actually could be worth a little bit more. I think San Andreas Black Label can be worth like $25, $30. Um, so I think there might have been a best offer there. I don't exactly know how it went for just the $18, but still going internationally kind of saves us in the end. Um, so yeah, 18 plus 26, that was a good sale. I actually wouldn't recommend this next sale. It's uh, the TV show House, which is right here. I can get it out. There it is there. House, uh, there's five. There should be one other season. There it is there house cool so seasons one to six of house now this one sold for 28 dollars and 45 cents i think it was i think it was originally tried to be listed up to 30 dollars the issue that i've got with this listing is one it's a very long sell through rate it takes ages to get this thing sold um some tv shows just sell better than others basically um, but 28.45 won't help us because six dvds needs to go into a medium satchel and the medium satchel is well over ten dollars. It might be ten or eleven bucks to send this off. So that kind of doesn't help us from an average um, sale price perspective. You've got to pull eleven dollars off the twenty-eight, so it pulls this sale down to just seventeen bucks. Um, so yeah, if I'm out in the thrift store because of that reason, I'm probably not picking this one up like I used to. Um, you just learn over time. But in the end, to get it out the door, you know, twenty-eight forty-five. It's not the end of the world. We'll just have to put it into a medium satchel. If it was if it was five, well that saves us a little bit. We make an extra couple of dollars because five DVDs goes into a small satchel. But this one's obviously six, so we've got to pay a little more. All right, this next one was a good one, guys. Uh, we've got Time Crisis, Time Crisis on the PlayStation One. This is a ripping game, guys. Anything um, PlayStation One does incredibly well. I've found over my years of selling video games. I actually don't have a whole lot of them on this wall. I'm all the generic PlayStation 2s, PlayStation 4. Uh, we've got some 3s up there. And then Xbox and Wii. So this old school vintage stuff, it just doesn't hang around. We don't have a lot of it. But anyway, this one sold for $40. Um, we'll put this one into a box and it will ship off for the rate of a small satchel. Uh, so we'll only pay $8.50 for this to ship off. And uh, I think, I believe from memory, we only paid $5 for this. Um, so five and a 40, that's a much better scenario. Don't have a lot to say about this next one. Uh, it's just the Mummy Trilogy on DVD. Um, that one just sold for $15. So we'll put him into a, um, put him into a, a tracked envelope, $5 and 30 cents. Uh, but yeah, a bit like the video game that sold for $15. You're just not making a ton of money on that. And it's again, not something that I'm buying from here on in. All right, the next one, PlayStation 3 game, Final Fantasy 13. PlayStation 3, Final Fantasy 13. I always just double check. I always just double check to make sure that the disc is in there, it is the right game, you just never know. Um, I always like to do that. Um, 1995 was the sale price for Final Fantasy. That is more of a modern day list, a modern day listing, what a silly term. Um, more of a recent listing. Um, this was out of the private buy that I did just last week. Uh, in my most recent video, I went up to um, Sandgate, which was a two hour drive and I met up with Scotty and I bought so many video games we've gone ahead and listed. And I've actually, this little tower here 
these towers here are kind of those like $15 games that I've been pulling out that we've had previously listed. Um, I've, I've just started to do them in bulk bundles now just because of that price I was telling you about earlier. It's just not enough for me to make it worthwhile. Um, funny how after four years, I'm only just cluing on to the fact. Um, Final Fantasy though, it was the one that came in at a $20 comp. So I went ahead and I listed that individually. And that's the way we're going to be doing our video games from here on in. Halo 4 is our next one. We got this done for $35. Reason being, it was brand new and sealed, which is always quite handy when you're finding those games uh, out in thrift stores and garage sales and flea markets. If they've just got that little slip on the top there and there's, it's all sealed up, you can always account for some more dollars selling it brand new as opposed to pre-owned. So $35 for a game in pre-owned condition that's worth you know, 10 bucks. Good little turnaround on that one. Thrift stores as well, I should say. The thrift stores don't recognise that. If they see it brand new and sealed, they don't mark it up, typically. Um, so that's where you can take a win if you're uh, keeping your eyes peeled for the sealed stuff. I've actually just had a bit of a look and there's a lot of video games coming up. So I've just gone ahead and I've grabbed a few out here. I'll quickly take you through them. Uh, 1995 Call of Duty Black Ops number 2. Um, that was again just bought last week off Scotty. Um, this was bought off last week as well, Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort. Um, that one was a $40 game, always a good seller, Wii Sports Resort. Done that so many times. Uh, 40 bucks is pretty standard. Um, there was a coupon activated though. I've got coupons across my entire store for 5% at checkout. I think it's a great way to incentivize sales. Um, so there was only a $2 cost there at 5% that I had to pull off that, so $37.95. Uh, for Wii Sports Resort. We also sold um, Playboy The Mansion. Um, that one sold for $18 on a best offer. Originally had that listed up for $20. Took a best offer at $18. Um, that's the other thing you, you've got to account for when you're doing up these cheap video games. There's people that are always going to do a best offer with you. Um, so to have a higher average sale price on those categories means that you're going to be able to still barter with them, still give them a best offer. 50% of my sales are done via best offer. So I do need to account for that. Um, but I only ever sort of play on best offer within 5% of the asking price because um, they can just typically go ahead and use the coupon at checkout for 5%. Um, so at most, sort of 5 to 10 maximum is what I'm always going to do for best offers. Um, and then there was this one as well. I, I spoke about that earlier, San Andreas. Um, we had another sale come through for $18. I'm going to have to check the comps on this one. Because I feel like San Andreas, even a black label like this one is, PlayStation 2 games are always a touch more valuable or at least more sought after by collectors um, as a black label compared to a platinum version. Um, I don't have a platinum here, but basically just a silver silver PlayStation 2 line along the top there. But anyway, both of the uh, San Andreas, one obviously goes to Brazil, the other one goes locally here in Australia. Um, but $18 on that one there. So again, guys, you know, you're talking 20 bucks each, but that is $80 worth of value there, 100 when you count for Wii Sports Resort. So you know, they do add up and they do sell regularly as you're seeing. All right, the next one that we've got is this large allocation of Simpsons Classics. There's 10 in total. So movies, um, just mini episodes within these DVDs. They're not, they're not the, the Simpsons seasons that go for a lot of money. Um, so this bundle, because they don't go for a lot of money, I did these up as a bundle for $35. And that's what we got for it. I'm probably going to put these, because there's 10 of them, when I go to 10 DVD bundles, I like to put them into boxes. So I actually went and bought a couple of boxes, or grabbed a couple of boxes, obviously, for Bunnings to account for this as well. Um, that was one of the few that I needed boxes for. So you could get away with putting them into a satchel um, with a bit of bubble wrap, but it would probably need to go into a medium satchel. Um, and that's pretty much what the box is going to work out to anyway. You've just got more added protection uh, when you put it in a box. So we're going to do that for that. These are a bit like the PlayStation 1 games. They are in high demand. Nintendo Switch. If you can find any Switch games, guys, you'll sell them fast and you'll sell them for a good amount of money as well. This one was Deadly Premonition number two. There it is there. Deadly Premonition, a blessing in disguise. Um, we're going to easily get this one into a tracked envelope. Um, there it is there. No manual on this one, but Deadly Premonition 2. Um, we got a $40 sale price, I believe. Yeah, 40 bucks. So, 40 bucks when you're only buying it for a couple of dollars, like we did off Selwyn a few weeks ago. Uh, it was good to see that one come through in a big bulk buy. Now, I alluded to these um, video game bundles that we're selling up here doing really, really well earlier in the video, and we have had a stack that's come through and sold. 
Um, so this one here is a large number of Xbox One games. And I think we did about $5 a piece on these because we got an $80 sale price. So 80 bucks, I'm gonna go ahead and put them into a box as well for these, just a bit like the DVDs, the Simpsons DVDs. When you just get a large volume, it's just so much easier to whack it into a box. Just put a stack of bubble wrap around it and then throw it in. So $80 on that, the sell-through rate on this was about five hours. Really, uh, look, there's not even, truly, there's at most, the maximum value of any one of these games individually is like $15. So even if they're all worth $10 a piece, it's 160 in value if you were to sell them all individually. Um, but by selling them in one big allocation, we're able to get 80 bucks straight away just like that. And it was out of a bulk buy where we're going to make our money on selling all of the other games individually. And this is just a little cream on the crop scenario with all the cheap games that aren't worth very much. And yet we can sell them in a few hours. So it's my new plan of attack for the video games. I'm buying a lot of them and I'm selling them individually and in bulk. Finally, a new category, guys. I've got some shoes to take you through. Um, and they're right here because I only just listed them. The sell-through rate on these was hardly any length of time because why do you have a, have a think? Why would these have sold so fast? Well, the first one is obviously it's a really good brand. Second thing is they are in excellent condition. Third thing, the size is really good as well. They were big, big shoes, size 14s. And I love finding the larger sizes because they do just sell a little bit better than the smaller sizes. Um, now, both of these were bought on Wednesday last week. So we're talking about a five-day turnaround, four to five days. Um, these are the Nike Court Visions. Really cool colorway, black and red. Anything in Nike's sort of a Jordan-esque type look about it there. Uh, and then you've got the Air Trainer 1, the Jordan Air Trainer 1s. Well, not Jordan, sorry. Uh, Nike Air Trainer 1s. Um, so these ones sold for $80. Being a 14, though, I'm going to have to put them into a medium satchel. But it doesn't really matter so much because I'm obviously getting an $80 sale price on those. It was actually a viewer of the channel that saw these shoes in a YouTube video that I published last week and he hit me up on, on eBay and he bought them with a nice comment to say that um, he had just watched the video and wanted to get his hands on those. So thank you very much uh, to that viewer. And then these as well sold for $65, 65 bucks on them as well. So some fantastic average sale prices when you're talking shoes. You can play upwards of $50, 60 odd dollars. $80 for the uh, air trainer ones that you saw there. So a couple of medium satchels for 10 to $12 for what was $145 worth of the sale price. I should say as well, everything that I bought in the video that I published last week was for $500. So if you watched that video, you would have seen that I bought a lot of items off Scotty. I filled my entire car. And uh, these two single pairs of shoes have made up arguably 30% of that investment. So everything uh, out of that haul last week has been pretty much taken care of and we're now already in the profit. All right, I don't have a skew for this next sale because I put all of my DVD box sets in these shelves right here and a couple of other uh, items that aren't skewed is this here as well. So I know when a single DVD sells, it might be a, a place uh, to call home, it could be a pack to the rafters. If there's no skew on it, it's hopefully and I say hopefully because sometimes it's for some reason not fit in this allocation, uh, but hopefully on this bookcase. Anyway, I digress. We have had a sale come through, which is MASH, uh, three seasons. Now, I won't harp on this sale for too long because it's very much a similar situation to the house DVD that we had come through uh, a little bit earlier. Three seasons, it's not that many seasons, and the sale price on this was only $28, 29 odd dollars. Um, so again, you've got to put this one into a box that's going to cost you like $12 to $15 to ship off. So when you're out in a thrift store and you see single seasons, see that, the, com the complete first season? As soon as you see three DVDs to make up one season, you know that it's going to hurt you a lot on postage. So you, do have, a ha you have to have a bit of an eye for postage costs. You need to get a bit of an understanding for your postage costs when you're out and about because that's what can often hurt you, um, which will definitely hurt us on this occasion. But nonetheless, it is another sale that I'm actually going to put on house. Right there. This is building up. We're slowly getting through these, guys. Hopefully, you're enjoying this. Uh, it's slightly a different way of filming for me. So let me know in the comments if you're digging it or if you want me to go back to the old way of doing things. Skew number 53. We have these 
The Protectors. There they are there, the Protectors, Series 1 and Series 2. Now, the difference in shipment for these is because there's only two DVDs, we're going to put those into uh, the large, here's my little postage supply area. I'm going to put them into this, uh, which really is only ever used. I only ever use that envelope uh, when I'm using these uh, two DVD sales because that will fit in there perfectly. So that's how I do the, the double DVD. And that works out to a much cheaper postage rate. With the ones like this, Deadly Premonition, which I should put there because they're all the individual games, that's how I'm sort of I'm, I'm sort of putting them all together. There's a box there, there's gonna be a box there, box there, box there, and then small oh, box. I should, hold on, what am I doing? I should put that there. No, no, that was house, that's all good. But yeah, I am trying to sort of put them in order of how I'm gonna go about the shipping process a little bit later. But anyway, it's kind of irrelevant. Um, these, I use these small domestic tracked envelopes for items like this. Dragon Ball Z is our next sale. So nothing too special about this one here. I actually need to double check. This will go into a small satchel because as you can see, it's obviously only four DVDs. It sold for $33, which was a pretty good sale price, but it sold, it's off to France, and the postage was 20 bucks. You can see that there, postage 20, and then they paid a VAT, which is just an added sales tax. So it was a 63.90 revenue amount. And you can see that we made 42.79 on that. We don't get the VAT money, I don't think. I'm pretty sure we don't. But anyway, 20 bucks worth of shipping. It sold for 33.25. It's not too heavy. It's a pretty lightweight item. When you're doing international shipping, it all comes down to the weight. So I think off to France, that might actually cost us a touch more than 20 bucks. We'll have to see. While I was at it, I just looked out the next one. Uh, Law and Order, Special Victims Unit. A big thank you to a viewer of the channel that bought this one as well. Um, I think they were only $10 each, so a $20 sale price, but it's a two DVD sale, isn't it? So we're going to ship it off in this envelope as well. So that'll be about $6.50 to ship, uh, which brings it to a $13 sale price. And to be honest, for two DVDs, season 12 and 13, that's actually a good price. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Um, not something I would buy individually. This TV show, Law and Order Special Victims Unit, in its entirety... Well, you're talking a few hundred dollars and that's definitely worth it. But uh, on the odd occasion of picking up some spares and some loose seasons here and there, I've stopped doing it. All right, I've just looked out, just looked out our hat sales that we've had come through here. Um, geez, it's a bit of a love-hate relationship with the hats. You guys know I am always wearing my lids. Um, forever wearing the hats, forever finding the hats out in thrift stores. Um, can't get enough of them. But really, when you break it all down, the average sale price isn't, isn't too significant and you're always having to put them into a box, which I don't like to do boxes. They just take so much time. There's an extra process to measure and to weigh when you don't have to do that with envelopes and satchels. So it's a little bit more tedious to ship off. It's just something that I enjoy finding. And then I always kind of regret having so many of them and selling so many of them because the average sale price isn't hectic on them. Um, this one here was a Green Bay Packers hat that we sold for $25. You might see there that there's a little signature on the hat. I actually don't enjoy finding hats with signatures. Like I don't, I don't think that increases the value. Um, if there's no authentication or authenticity slip um, that accompanies the item, um, it really kind of almost just devalues the product in itself. Um, so yeah, $25 on that. I was kind of just happy to see that go. It came in a big hat bundle that I got off somebody over in the US a few months ago. Um, as these, which are actually, I personally think they're awesome um, vintage 1994 Rose Bowl um, hats, the badges. I've got um, one there and another one here, both of them 1994 Rose Bowl badges. Um, they sold for $45 to the same buyer. So again, we went on shipping, only having to put them into the one box. Um, shipping will cost, from a domestic standpoint, $8.50 for these. Uh, I'm on Australia Post Band 5 discount um, with the, the volume of sales that I do. Um, so that saves us a little bit of money there. So 45 for two hats works out to a $22.50 average sale price. And about $25 to $30 is typically what I sell my hats for. 
Um, however, I do buy them for a very cheap price as well. I, I typically pay no more than a couple of dollars. They're really quite cheap like video games and DVDs. And it's just, like I touched on, it's more just the shipping process is a little bit tedious, which is why I don't like to buy hundreds of them. But every weekend, you know, like, I, like you see here, two or three hats will always come through and sell. They just constantly tick over. So if you're looking for extra categories to get into, unless you love hats, I'd probably say don't bother. But because I do love my hats, I'm obviously just going to keep finding them and keep putting up with the shipping process. Another PlayStation 2 game that we sold for a $20 asking price on best offer for $18, uh, Monster Rumble. Uh, this is a Buzz game, which typically don't sell for great money, but this Buzz Jr. Monster Rumble, uh, it's a $20 sale price, which I don't think is too bad. You can list that one up individually. We had another Pokemon card sell out of the Selwyn allocation. It was this one here. This is actually a really good Pokemon card too. I won't try and pronounce the name but it is in excellent condition. And uh, we got $70. $70 bucks for that one there. So the Pokemon cards, guys, they are a very, very good category to get into. We just keep selling them in a very quick space of time. Just looked out this one as well. Vera, nothing too crazy about that. That will go into an envelope for $12 worth of a sale price. We also have these shoes sell as well. So the third pair of shoes, these are the Asics. What are they called? The Asics Gel Saga Sioux. The Asics Gel Saga Sioux. They're a US size 10. Um, these ones, unfortunately, didn't have... You can see there, they don't have their inner sole. And you really need to make sure you take a photo of that because people get very frustrated if you took outside photos only of the shoe and you didn't stipulate that there wasn't an insole. People get pretty frustrated. So just one thing when you're doing your shoes, make sure you do that. Just take the extra photo and it'll save you all the troubles. And then look at this, not a lot of clothing. Just that tub there that's always full. We've got a little bit on top of the books. This is all books down there. Uh, a little bit of clothing up the top there as well. So not a lot in the category for clothing, but these jeans have come through. Uh, these are the Levi Strauss 559. Now the reason why they've sold in a week, I bought them last Wednesday. So it's a six day sell through rate. It's the size. A waist 36 and a length 34, that's one of the most common sizes for jeans. It's a bit like the shoes. When you're doing the shoes, you really want to sort of find a slightly larger size, a 10 to 12, for instance. Um, 36, 34, I get excited when I find that size of jean. Uh, these are in great condition. The 559 typically sells for about 40. Uh, we got a $32 sale price on this, so I, I did give them a bit of a deal. Uh, 32 bucks when I bought it in a thrift store for about $6.00. That'll go off into a small satchel and should make us some pretty decent money. And in the consoles, we've sold another one, which is this. It's the Nintendo Wii U console and screen. Um, now, I got this in a, in a big bundle lot, um, a bit like what I got off Scotty the other day. We've got so many consoles down here. I've got to sift through at some point today. Probably Courtney will actually do some testing of all these cables. We've got three PlayStation 3s. We've got about six, how about five Xbox 360s. We've got some PlayStation 2 consoles. There's a lot to work through here over the next day or so. But this was a part of that allocation, not, not last week, but one that we had a couple of weeks ago. And I didn't have any cables to test this. So I undered it and I thought, what do I do? And I literally just listed up for what it was. I was just honest in the... Uh, in the listing, I said, look, I have this item. I don't know if it works. I'm gonna list it as untested and uh, let somebody that has some cables test it out. And then so much so, I actually had somebody that sent me a message and they said, um, do you have a returns policy? And I said, yep, absolutely. If there's any issues, just let me know. Shoot it back and uh, I'll issue a full refund. So that's exactly what's happened. We ended up getting a $90 sale price. Now you can sell this for a whole lot more money if it's tested and working. You could go out and find the cables, um, but I just don't want to be bothered with that. It was part of a larger big bundled purchase, so $90 added to that uh, purchase uh, worth of revenue is, I think it's worthwhile, $90 worth of a sale price for something that is untested, uh, with the opportunity for them to bring it back on a returns policy. So we'll do some bubble wrap, we'll put that into a box as well, and we'll get that one out the door too.
This next one is an absolute monster. We have sold Pokemon Heart Gold version, complete in box. The only thing missing is this little Poke Walker. I bought it off Selwyn. I actually didn't buy it because it was part of another con uh, consignment lot with Selwyn. Um, this thing ended up selling for $350, but it had a coupon activated, so it made it $332.50. And on consignment with Selwyn, there was promoted listings that had this one sell as well, so the fees were about $50. Bucks. Uh, we're ending up... We're, what are we making, I think? Let me just double-check on this one. We're making $120. $120 for Selwyn and $120 for me after fees and postage. That is crazy. All right. So, Monday morning. Well, Tuesday morning. Uh, we've gone ahead and looked everything out, which is the first step. I've walked you through all of that. There it is, all there. Uh, there's about 36 items. Um, I've got in the other room, which I'm not going to show you on this video, four other items that have gone on to sell in the second store. Uh, but I'll take you through that in the second store video series that I'm putting out once a week on this channel. Um, so it was good to see four more sales coming through, which I'll update you guys on. But what I want to do now, rather than leaving the video there, is actually take you through the process of shipping off all of this and the process that I go through to get it done as efficiently as I can. All right, so first things first, I like to look out everything that's going to go into an envelope uh, as priority number one. And what I mean by envelope are these small envelopes and the large envelopes that I show you for the two DVDs. Um, and we've got quite a few. I think there's 13 envelopes that are going to be required. So fortunately, I've got quite a large number here. Um, but I'm basically just going to fill them all out and complete those envelopes first. Um, I'm going to submit the tracking number as well, which is just there. Tracking number is just there. So you scan that off your mobile phone. I do everything off the mobile. Um, so I'll do this off camera. I'll just go ahead because I'm filming on a mobile phone. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll uh, fulfill all of these. And then from there, I can actually upload everything into the Australia Post My Business. And it won't upload, obviously, because I've added the tracking and I've fulfilled these ones, it won't upload these ones. So I know that everything that goes into the Australia Post My Business just needs to be uh, attended to, basically, and completed. So first step is always track post envelopes. So the envelopes are done. I then like to go ahead and do all of the satchels. And then from there, I like to do the boxes. And then after that, I do anything that sells internationally. There's no rhyme or reason for it. It's just a natural process that I like to go through to get the shipping done. And I find when I do them all in their groups of satchels, boxes, international, I can just get the job done a whole lot quicker. And a lot of what I'm trying to do this year is actually around efficiencies. I'm just trying to get as efficient as I possibly can. Um, so anything that you know of or that you do and practice with regards to efficient shipping methods, uh, definitely let me know because by no means do I do it the fastest way possible. Uh, and I'm always trying to learn just as I guess we all are. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and finish off the satchels, the boxes, and all of the international postage. And I'll see you at the post office. I have to run out and grab some lunch though. I am craving Subway for some reason. And I'd love to know in the comments what you guys go to when it comes to Subway. I'm a very, very boring Italian herbs bread uh, with just ham, ham and salad. Uh, I do go the full lot. I don't really say no to anything in regards to the salad, but I do just put the plain ham on it. So surely I can improve my situation at Subway. Uh, let me know in the comments what you do. Uh, I also need to go, uh, rookie error, I got the boxes sorted, didn't I, this morning, but I didn't get any sticky tape and bubble wrap. I actually didn't realise we were out of it. So I've got to go back to Bunnings while I grab my Subway uh, and just pinch some of that as well. But um, this is a big week this week. There's a few things coming up next week. Um, but on Friday of this week, I'm actually doing the David Goggins running challenge, which I'm pretty nervous about. Uh, I'm just having a very light week of running this week and then on Friday this week, I'm actually kicking it off an 84 kilometer challenge uh, where we've got to run six and a half kilometers or four miles for those in, in America uh, every four hours. And we're gonna do that for two days for 48 hours. I think it works out to about 80 kilometers that we've got to run or 84 kilometers. It's like two marathons in two days. Um, but the big, the big 
battle that is it's going to be is the fact that there's going to be sleep deprivation. I'm going to, I won't be sleeping because every four hours you've got to be out on your next run. Um, we're doing all of this to try and raise money for this um, for the Heart Foundation. Um, and I'll put a link into the description of this video if any of you guys want to support that. We're trying to raise $5,000. I'm doing it with one of my really good friends, Brooke. Um, and we're going to be doing it down along the beach, along the Esplanade here on the Gold Coast. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually a pretty pretty planned out event. There's a lot of different events taking place. If you're on the Gold Coast, um, you know, through the link that I've got, you can check out where we're going to be at what time across the two day weekend. Um, but yeah, Friday through to Sunday afternoon, tickets are $10 if you want to come down. We've got a lot of prizes, a lot of giveaways, a lot of brands involved with all of this as well. It's actually quite a big thing. Um, and there's going to be a lot of people down there for it as well. So I'm looking forward to it. I think the body's ready for it. Um, but I wanted to touch on it in this video. You can still support the challenge uh, that we're doing by uh, donating any amount. Literally any amount is hugely appreciated. Uh, the link is in the description below. Well, I can officially say the post is done. And that is a very nice feeling. Um, so, two o'clock. Two o'clock. I'm umming and ahhing about what I should do next as number one priority. And I feel like it should be to edit this video, just to knock it over and have it out of the way. Yeah, it's gonna be another two or three hours work, but I think it's I think it's the, the next best thing that I could do. That's really all I have to worry about each and every day is what is the next best thing that I could do and what are the pre, not prerequisite, um, non-negotiables. What are the non-negotiables that just have to get done? Oh. Dude just did a massive burnout. Scared the hell out of me. Thought he crashed. Um, where was I? Where was I? Yeah, what's what's the what's the prerequisite? No. Non-negotiable. Why do I keep saying prerequisite? What is the non-negotiables of the day? And for me, it was it was that's right, that's what I was saying. It was shipping today. It's not what I wanted to do, but it was the number one thing that had to get done today. And then from there, they all just whittle away to the least, least priority. So, what should I do next? It should be edit the video. Listing, I've got listings. Corny's in tomorrow, Corny's got listings ready to go. Today's listings are up. So I don't need to worry about any of that. And therefore, because of that, I don't really need to go out thrifting. So, I know I said at the start of this video that I was gonna go out thrifting, but unfortunately I've decided I won't be. But there are plenty of other pieces of content on this YouTube channel from a thrifting perspective. So if you wanna go and catch your, uh, catch yourself watching a few of those videos, I'm gonna leave one for you right there. But thanks very much for being here for this one, guys. It's been a, uh, a good old morning getting the shipping done. I'm, pleased to have you along for the ride today and hopefully you can be around for the next couple over the next few weeks because uh, I'm going to try and keep making these videos.